Hi, we're the North Google Spartan Cheerleaders. And you're watching the Friday Night Football Show! Woo! New beginnings for the Berwick football program. A last name synonymous with high school football across the Northeast P area. area is back on the Bulldog sidelines. Gianna Galli was at Berwick for C.J. Curry's first game as head coach, Gianna. That's right, Nick. C.J. Curry, ring a bell. New head coach, grandson of the longtime legacy coach, George Curry. He talked about instilling toughness and discipline back into the Berwick program, and he stood on that tonight. Berwick hosted Lake Lehman home at Crispin Field, and these Bulldogs sure played like it's a new start for them and a fresh start for the program. Berwick held Lake Lehman to a 7-7 to straight through the majority of the fourth quarter. They made sure that coverage was tied with their DBs like Kayla May here. Lehman's quarterback number six, Hayden Evans, being brought down by the Bulldogs numerous times throughout this game. It was almost inevitable at times to make him make any kind of effort. And like Lehman winning this game by a score 14 to seven and overall a future with great hope and possibility for this Berwick program under a new Curry era. He kept saying, you know, Coach Curry, it's something this program has not heard in a long time. And to hear that out on the field today, he was excited. Four years ago, I was walking excited. out of that locker room right there, tapping the win sign. And so it just feels so great. And I'm so proud to be back here. And, you know, we've really focused since January on building our pride, discipline, commitment, and toughness. And if we can stay true to that tonight, play for each other, be able to handle adversity, stick together as a brotherhood, I, I can't wait to see what this team can do out there. Well, Gianna, you know, obviously a legendary name uh, in the entire football world, and it's not going to take one week to, you know, turn Berwick into winning 50 nothing every single night. Of course, it takes time, and it's only the start for C.J. Curry. A young coach, it seems like the players really enjoy him as the head man, so obviously, you know. Take some time to advance for them and grow, but it's a Curry name and something for people to look forward to in this program. 100%, Gianna. You'll be back with us in just a few minutes, but an in-town rivalry unlike any other. Typically, Blue Mountain and Schuylkill Haven play as a warm-up for the district playoffs. Well, this year, the two meet to set the tone for the next nine weeks, and things can get wild in the Skook. The Eagle students ready for this electric rivalry. No score in the first half. We head to the third, Hunter Blankenhorn. Nine-yard rush inside the pylon for a touchdown. PAT no good, it's six nothing Eagles. Blue Mountain near their own end zone. Brady Strauss going through the air, but Nico Karastia Picks it off and has a house call. The Hurricanes tie us up at six. Late in the third quarter, 15 seconds to go. Strauss letting it fly for Gage Gears, and he's off to the races. Gears, 66 yards for a touchdown. Blue Mountain beats Haven for the sixth time in a row, 19 to 14. And what a beautiful night it was for the first football game of the season as the Wilkes-Barre area took on Whitehall. Now this game was very physical from start to finish and there were hard hits on both sides of the ball. The Wolfpack taking charge in the first quarter, a pass from quarterback Jay Cow to Trayvon Gambitsky, the wide receiver plowing through to put up the first points on the board. And remember us talking about this duo in the preseason? Well, there's a reason why. The two added again for the second touchdown of the game, and that was just the beginning as the Wolfpack ended the game 27 to 10. Wyoming area and Crestwood battling. The fan bases for both these schools also always in the crowd and packing. How about Wyoming area? Trustin Johnson, the touchdown and that gives the Warriors the lead. But hold on a second, Wyoming area trying to get back on the board, but instead it's Giovanni Barna for Crestwood. Makes a move on his own fellow number two and takes it all the way to the end zone for a pick six. And that ties us up between Crestwood and Wyoming area. Anthony DeLuca, he's been a starter for this Wyoming area team for a couple of years and he can make great plays like this. Looks for Luke Kopechny, makes a move on the inside and scores Wyoming area they cruise to a 28-21 victory. And the night is not over yet, so don't go, oop. Buckle up as it was a wild game in Loyola Sock where the Lancers held a 14-0 lead over the Mifflinburg Wildcats. And right here on the Houston kickoff, as you know, when we say that, a touchdown is likely on the way and Loyola Sock's Danny Devil delivers. He makes the catch deep in Lancer territory and races it all the way back to the near sideline. The kickoff return for a touchdown seals the momentum from Mifflinburg and Lancer stretch in their lead 21 to seven. Later in the third quarter, Mifflinburg would score twice. 
Mifflinburg down by one, they go for two, and Loyola Sox defense stops the run up the middle to maintain a one-point lead. With under two minutes left, Loyola Sox Anthony Lewis would intercept a desperation pass to seal the victory for the Lancers. Loyola Sox on home, defeating Mifflinburg Wildcats for the score 28-7. And the night is not over yet, so don't go anywhere. We'll be highlighting the team number one versus team number five right after the break, and it was an exciting one to say the least.